Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we will be discussing on Saxa metonym. Neuromuscular blockers can be classified into non-depolarizing muscle relaxants and depolarizing muscle relaxants, of which Saxa metonym is the only example in clinical use. A few comments on Deca metonym. It has a more rapid onset of action than Saxa metonym, however it is no longer available for clinical use. It is prone to tachyphylaxis, where an increasing amount of the drug is needed to produce the same effect. It has a longer duration of action of about 20 minutes and it is not metabolized by plasma cholinesterase. It is primarily excreted unchanged through the kidneys. We move on to Saxa metonium. It is introduced in 1951 and plays an important role in anesthesiology. High-dose rocuronium may act as a substitute for its role. It is stored at 4 Celsius to prevent hydrolysis and it is incompatible with thiopental. Crystallization will occur. Its structure is a bisquaternary amine. It is a dicholine ester of succinic acid. It is almost identical to two molecules of acetylcholine. The quaternary ammonium radicals cling to the alpha subunits of the acetylcholine receptor. Mechanism of action. It is an agonist at the acetylcholine receptor, binding to the two alpha subunits of the acetylcholine receptor depolarizes the membrane. In normal physiological depolarization, Voltage-sensitive sodium channels first open and then close. In this closed conformation, they are inactivated. Membrane potential is restored within 1 millisecond as acetylcholine is broken down by acetylcholine esterase. Depolarizing relaxants are not metabolized by acetylcholine esterase and acetylcholine receptor remains activated. The sodium channels remain open for some minutes and the membrane is depolarized. Fasciculation occurs, and initial depolarization and muscle contraction occurs. As this effect persists, further action potential cannot pass down the ion channels, the muscle becomes flaccid, and repolarization does not occur. Indications for Saxa metonym Rapid tracheal intubation in patients who are at risk of pulmonary aspiration of gastric contents Cases where difficult tracheal intubation is expected. Cases of severe laryngospasm and modification of seizures in electroconvulsive therapy to reduce the muscle power and risk of injury. The dose of Saxa metonium. For intubation, it has the most reliable and rapid onset of action of any of the muscle relaxants presently available. Paralysis occurs within 30 to 90 seconds and typically lasts 2 to 5 minutes. For the neonate, it is 3 mg per kg. For the child, it is 2 mg per kg and 1 mg to 1.5 mg per kg in the adult. For obese patients, use adjusted body weight to a maximum of 200 mg. Adjusted body weight equals ideal body weight plus 40% of excess. An ideal body weight can be calculated using Broca's formula where in men, it will be height in centimeters minus 100, and in women, it would be height in centimeters minus 105. For the intramuscular route, double the IV dose. Saxa metonium can be used intermittently at a dose of 0.2 to 0.5 mg per kg for subsequent doses, and also by infusion at 2 to 5 mg per minute, diluted into 0.1%, with either dextrose 5% or normal saline. There is risk of bradycardia with subsequent doses. The maximum quoted total dose is 10 mg per kg, and it is likely that phase 2 block has been induced even at lower doses. The dose for severe laryngospasm is 0.25 to 0.5 mg per kg via the intravenous route, and for the intramuscular and intralingual route, it would be 2 to 4 mg per kg. For modification of seizure in ECT, 
The dose is 0.5 to 1 mg per kg. Metabolism Saxa methonium diffuses away from the acetylcholine receptor down a concentration gradient. It is hydrolyzed via ester hydrolysis mainly by plasma choline esterase, also known as pseudo choline esterase. It breaks down into succinyl monocholine, which has weak blocking properties, and choline, and subsequently to succinic acid and choline. Recovery from neuromuscular block typically starts to occur within 3 minutes and is complete within 12 to 15 minutes for patients with normal plasma choline esterase enzymes. Hexafluoranium and tetrahydroaminocrine has been used to prolong saxamethonium's action. Anticholine esterases such as neostigmine inhibits plasma choline esterase and prolongs the action of saxamethonium. A small amount is hydrolyzed by non-specific plasma esterases and very little metabolism occurs in the liver. 10% is excreted unchanged through the kidney. In comparison with rocuronium, saxamethonium provides the quickest means of achieving tracheal intubation and it is still the first-line agent in rapid sequence induction despite its many adverse effects. Rocuronium, on the other hand, has a much more benign side effect profile. At an intravenous dose of 0.9 to 1 mg per kg, rocuronium can provide intubating conditions equivalent to those provided by saxamethonium, although up to 35 seconds lower. Sugamadex is a novel reversal agent for rocuronium and can reverse the effect of rocuronium from any depth of neuromuscular block. However, a 500mg ampule of Sugamadex at current prices costs €150. Euros. Problems with Saxamethonium Prolonged action due to decreased amount of normal plasma cholinesterases. Decreased activity of plasma choline esterase, which metabolizes saxamethonium, results in prolonged neuromuscular block, and this may result from reduced amount of normal plasma choline esterase or inherited atypical choline esterase. In a situation where there is reduced amount of normal plasma choline esterase, the structure of the plasma choline esterase remains normal, and neuromuscular block is prolonged only by minutes rather than hours. Situations that can result in reduced amount of normal plasma choline esterase includes decreased enzyme synthesis in liver disease, starvation, carcinomatosis, pregnancy, renal disease, hypothyroidism, cardiopulmonary bypass, and plasma pharesis. Competition by other drugs metabolized by esterases such as etomidate, propanidate, ester local anesthetics, anti-cancer drugs such as methotrexate, monoamine oxidase inhibitors, esmolol and diamorphine. Anticholine esterases inhibits both plasma choline esterase as well as acetylcholine esterase and this decreases the amount of normal functional plasma choline esterase. Prolonged action due to inherited atypical plasma Cholinesterases. Decreased activity of plasma cholinesterase, which metabolizes saxamethonium, results in prolonged neuromuscular block and may result from inherited atypical cholinesterase. Genetics of inherited atypical cholinesterases. Atypical cholinesterases have qualitative differences with the normal cholinesterases. Its synthesis is controlled by autosomal recessive genes and so far 14 different mutations have been identified. The normal gene is characterized by EU. The commonest atypical gene is EA and occurs in about 4% of the Caucasian population. Other atypical genes include the fluoride gene EF and the silent gene ES. A heterozygote of EUEA, the action of Saxamethonium will be prolonged by about 30 minutes, which equates to up to 50% prolongation of neuromuscular block. In the homozygote EAEA, 
one in 3,200 to 5,000 individuals will be affected and the action of saxamethonium will be prolonged by around 2 hours but can be up to 4 to 8 hours. EA and ES or ESES variants, the block can be up to 4 to 8 hours. Non-specific esterases will gradually clear the drug from the plasma in patients with atypical plasma cholinesterases. Saxamethonium apnea is not life-threatening if recognized and treated early, exclude other causes for delayed recovery from anesthesia. Neuromuscular monitoring will show reduction in height of all four twitches in a train of four, no fade with tetanic stimulation, and no post-tetanic facilitation. Management Keep the patient anesthetized and continue mechanical ventilation of the lungs until the neuromuscular block wears off. Avoid accidental awareness during general anesthesia. Monitor neuromuscular transmission until full recovery from residual neuromuscular block and then wean from mechanical ventilation. Document all events and inform the patient's general practitioner. Fresh frozen plasma transfusion may provide a source of choline esterase. Anticholine esterase such as neostigmine may be considered to reverse a dual block. Test to confirm saxamethonium apnea at least 3 days after exposure to saxamethonium as plasma choline esterase activity is reduced by the presence of saxinalcholine. If the patient has received homologous blood transfusion, wait for at least 8 weeks before doing the test. A patient confirmed to have reduced plasma choline esterase activity and structurally abnormal enzyme should be given a warning card or alarm bracelet detailing his or her genetic status. The genetic status of the patient's immediate relatives should be examined, reassurance and explanation to the patient that he can experience future anesthetic safely and manage accidental awareness in general anesthesia if present. Certain drugs may inhibit plasma choline esterase such as methotrexate, neostigmine, organophosphorus compounds and lithium. Tests to confirm saxamethonium apnea include the dibucane number and direct assay of choline esterase activity. The dibucane number is described by Kahlo and Ginesse in 1957. Testing using inhibition by dibucane and fluoride has been superseded by direct assay of choline esterase activity. The dibucane number represents the percentage inhibition of plasma choline esterase by dibucane, which is an amide LA. When the plasma from a patient of normal genotype is added to a water bath containing benzoyl choline, it reacts with plasma choline esterase and emits light of a given wavelength, which is detected spectrophotometrically. If dibucane is also added to the water bath, the reaction is inhibited and no light is produced. The percentage inhibition is referred to as the dibucane number and the normal value is 75 to 85. For the heterozygous variant, the dibucane number will be 60 and it will be less than 20 for the homozygous variant. If fluoride is added to the solution instead of dibucane, the fluoride gene may be detected. If there is no reaction in the presence of the substrate only, the silent gene is present. Direct assay of choline esterase activity. Normal level of plasma choline esterase is 1000 to 3500 units per liter. Saxamethonium is a trigger for malignant hyperpyrexia. And anaphylaxis is more commonly seen with saxamethonium than with any other muscle relaxant and accounts for almost 50% of the reactions. Repeated exposure to saxamethonium is a risk factor for anaphylaxis. Phase 2 block is caused by repeated doses or prolonged infusions of saxamethonium, which is once a routine technique for caesarean sections under general anesthesia. Phase 2 block has all the characteristics of a non-depolarizing competitive block, which includes fate of the train of fall response, tetanic fate, and post-tetanic potentiation. The phase 2 block is potentiated by inhalational anesthetic agents and the mechanism is not fully understood. Theories include post-junctional receptor desensitization 
and presynaptic inhibition of acetylcholine synthesis and release. A side note, phase 1 block refers to the initial depolarizing block. Phase 2 block can be reversed with standard anticholinesterases such as neostigmine, but the response is unpredictable. Brady arrhythmias. Administration of saxamethonium is usually associated with a transient tachycardia, however it can also cause bradycardia, the mechanism of which is the stimulation of mascarenic receptors in the sinoatrial node. Nodal or ventricular escape beats may develop in extreme circumstances. Bradycardia is more common in patients with a high vagal tone, such as in children and the physically fit, patients who has not received an anticholinergic agent such as glycopyrrolate, and patients receiving repeated doses of succinylcholine. Anticholinergic should be given routinely if more than one dose of saxamethonium is administered. Myalgia Myalgia can be very severe and can mimic symptoms of cardiac ischemia when it affects the intercostal muscles and the diaphragm. The mechanism is not fully understood. Fasciculations and muscle creatinine phosphokinase levels do not correlate with the degree of myalgia. Myoglobin can also be detected in urine. Risk factors for saxamethonium-induced myalgia includes young healthy patients with large muscle mass, the female gender, early ambulation, middle age, lack of muscular fitness, rapid injection, and repeated smaller doses of saxamethonium. The location of the myalgia is usually the diaphragm, between the scapula, intercostal muscles, neck and upper arms, and it usually lasts 2-3 to three days and is not relieved easily by conventional analgesics. Techniques to reduce saxamethonium induced myalgia None is universally effective, however the following can be tried. Non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocking drugs at one-tenth of the usual intubating dose given 2-3 to three minutes before saxamethonium Tubocurarin is the best studied, although others have been used. This technique cannot be used in rapid sequence induction to minimize the risk of aspiration. Other drugs that can be used include lidocaine, diazepam, dantrolene, saxamethonium at 0.1 mg per kg IV 2 minutes before the main dose, calcium, magnesium sulfate, chlorpromazine, and hexafluoranium. Muscle fasciculation and masseter spasm. The mechanism includes pre-junctional stimulation of the acetylcholine receptor on the motor nerve and results in transient repetitive firing and acetylcholine release. Abnormal sustained muscle contraction may be seen in patients with dystrophia myotonica and masseter spasm may be so severe that oral intubation is impossible. Increased intraocular pressure. The mechanism is contraction of the external ocular muscles and the internal ocular muscles, and it's not reduced by precurarization. The effect lasts for as long as the neuromuscular block. Increased IOP may cause expulsion of the vitreal contents in a patient with an open eye injury, however this is unlikely. The risk of pulmonary aspiration of gastric contents, which is life-threatening, outweighs the risk of expulsion of vitreal contents in most cases during rapid sequence induction. It is uncertain whether saxamethonium can increase the intracranial pressure, increase intragastric pressure. In a patient with normal lower esophageal sphincter, regurgitation of gastric contents is unlikely. However, in patients with incompetent lower esophageal sphincter, regurgitation may occur. Hyperkalemia In normal patients, serum potassium may increase by 0.5 millimoles per litre. The rise in potassium may be dangerous in patients with damaged or denervated muscles. This effect is thought to be caused by muscle fasciculation. Hyperkalemia may be less marked with newer potent inhalational agents such as isoflurane and sevoflurane. The mechanism is damaged muscle leaks potassium and denervated muscles has increased extrajunctional acetylcholine receptors Therefore, the release of potassium may be exaggerated. 
the duration for which saxamethonium should be avoided due to risk of hyperkalemia, saxamethonium should not be used 9 days to 2 months after extensive burns, saxamethonium should not be used 10 days to 7 months for patients with spinal cord injury, intracranial lesions such as cerebrovascular accidents, subarachnoid hemorrhage and head injury, and muscle trauma. Saxamethonium should not be used 4 days to 7 months after peripheral nerve injury. For patients with peripheral neuropathy, tetanus, severe infection, muscular dystrophy, and history of malignant hyperthermia, the period of risk is uncertain. It is wise to avoid saxamethonium in these patients. The risk of hyperkalemia in disseminated sclerosis and Parkinson's disease is unclear. Avoid saxamethonium in patients with renal failure as these patients may already have an elevated serum potassium. Dangerous hyperkalemia can occur in the critically ill as well. These are my references. Thank you.